Hi everyone, Erin Weber here, and for this assignment, I chose the topic of information literacy in nursing education. In this presentation, I'm going to review a background of the issue, the current state of the issue, some major writings and the literature regarding this problem, uh, and as well as some conclusions that we can draw from the literature. I'm going to assess if there's any research opportunities and then give you a personal reflection uh, of my findings and this issue. So as we all know, the exorbitant amount of information that is available to us today via computers and smartphones makes it difficult to weed through and discern what is reliable and quality information from that that isn't. While some now argue that we are entering the experience age, with the ease of access and dissemination of information resulting from the rise of the internet, many refer to the years between 1970 and today as the information age. Although there are many benefits of easily accessing and sharing information, the ease and access of accessing and sharing misinformation is equally a concern. Therefore, academia has a critical societal responsibility to facilitate students' abilities to discern valid and reliable information from the contrary. Several definitions of information literacy have been put forth. First, the ability to formulate a question, search for, find, and acquire information, and then use the information responsibly. Another is the demonstration of an awareness of how one can gather, use, manage, synthesize, and create information and data in an ethical manner, and has the information skills to do so effectively. In the healthcare arena, lack of information literacy jeopardizes the preservation and advancement of evidence-based practices and lifelong learning. Consequently, nursing education and educators have a duty to promote information literacy through substantiated methods and interventions to enable the future of nursing to uphold evidence-based practice. The topic of information literacy and concern for inf information illiteracy grows. Educators have to navigate in educational environments with both younger students who are often wrongly assumed to be able to seek out and appropriately discern quality information without instruction, and their older counterparts who grow up in a time when resources weren't so readily available. Even in 2010, nurse educators at Northern Michigan University found that examples of integrating information literacy into curriculum were almost non-existent. Moreover, there is often a misconception that students growing up in the information age are innately savvy when it comes to information seeking and conducting research. In contrast, the literature suggests that students lack confidence in their ability to perform key elements of basic information searches, such as identifying keywords, finding scholarly literature, and accessing full text articles. This is a significant barrier to fully recognizing evidence-based practice in professional practice. In 2000, the ACRL formulated the ACRL Information Literacy Competency Standards for higher education, which served as a guideline with specific indicators to identify students as information literate. In 2016, the standards were superseded by the ACRL Framework for Information Literacy. The framework shifted significantly away from the previous standards-based approach and adopted a more philosophical theory of threshold concepts. For instance, the framework introduced clusters of interconnected core competencies in place of task-based task learning objectives and advocated for librarian autonomy in developing their own assessment methods based on their needs instead of using the prescriptive list of 22 measurable performance indicators of information literacy proposed by the standards. Librarians have been charged with using the framework to guide development of instructional sessions regarding information literacy. Yet many health sciences librarians admittedly remain ambivalent or unaware of the framework and budgeting and resources to integrate information literacy into academia remain, remains marginal. Higher education and professional standards for nursing oblige nurses to practice based on the most current evidence av available. To attain this ideal, it is necessary to assess who the stakeholders are what the consequences are if not attained, and whether or not there are existing resolutions for fulfillment. 
I conducted a literature review using the CINAHL and ScienceDirect databases. I used the search terms information literacy and nursing education with the Boolean operator AND. This produced 64 results in CINAHL and 2,710 results in ScienceDirect. I used the inclusion criteria, review articles, research articles, book chapters, and practice guidelines published from 2013 to the present in the United States with full text availability in English and application to nursing education. Of these results, I selected 11 articles and four book chapters for an in-depth evaluation. The literature suggests that collectively, institutions in higher education, nursing education programs, nursing faculty, health science librarians, and other educational partners carry the responsibility to integrate information literacy into ac the academic environment. If these mentioned entities fail to acknowledge and uphold this responsibility, the ability of future nursing professionals to engage in an evidence-based model and manifest practice based on solid research is endangered. If nursing professionals are unable to identify, locate, interpret, and assimilate research evidence, their practice can become antiquated and endanger patient care. Moreover, the ability to guide patients to sort through misinformation from the pro proliferation of electronic health information is jeopardized. Over the past few years, as well as at the present, numerous strategies for expanding and improving instructional methods for information literacy have been and are being implemented and tested. The Instruction Matters Purdue Academic Course Transformation Impact Program is a course offered to teachers at Purdue that has demonstrated significant improvement in attaining information literacy related goals through revising courses to be more student centered and establishing partnerships between faculty and librarians. Specifically, one teacher explained how collaboration with an academic librarian led to the incorporation of peer led team learning workshops structured to develop biological information literacy in students. The teacher witnessed students engaging in peer teaching as they critiqued one another and brought attention to ethical guidelines in using information. Outside of the IMPACT program, other tools to aid in information literacy instruction include the Information Literacy Competency Standards for Nursing and related online course planning and assignment design tips, as well as the Information Literacy Framework website that prov provides a sort of sandbox of resources such as lesson plans, assignments, assessments, and other resources. These digital repositories are intended to serve as resources for both educators and students and facilitate sharing of research experiences and information literacy endeavors. One specific tool that I'd like to draw attention to, which is increasing in popularity, is the CRAAP or C-R-A-A-P test. And I've found this little comic that I found entertaining, so I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Student, hey librarian, how do I know if the stuff I find for my research is any good? Librarian, well young fellow, you could use the CRAAP test. CRAAP stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. Currency, is it recent? Has it been updated? Newer information is generally better. Relevance, does it relate to your work or were you just getting a bit desperate to find something? Think about who the intended audience was for the source and what level it is written at. Authority, does the source have cred? Is it kosher? Who wrote it? Who published it? Was it sponsored by some evil multinational? Accuracy, is it true? Does it include evidence or statistics? Did anyone check it? Sometimes this is known as peer review. And purpose, why does the information exist? To sell, to teach, to entertain? If you apply the CRAAP test when doing your research, young student, you'll be guaranteed a gold star for your work. Thank you, librarian. You really are incredibly erudite and strangely charismatic. While the mainstay of instruction remains classroom activities and workshops, it is clear that everyone from faculty and librarians to students and the public can benefit from more substantiated tips and tools to evaluate information and achieve information literacy.
Whether in the traditional classroom environment or in the expanding distance learning environment, champions of information literacy advocate for embedding information literacy continuously into the curriculum. One-time workshops and isolated, isolated efforts are not sufficient. Existing guidelines and resources, such as the IMPACT program, the ILCSN, and the framework need to be more widely adopted, disseminated, and expanded upon. Moreover, collaborative partnerships between librarians and faculty are imperative. While classroom teachers need to accept ownership of institutional goals for information literacy, partnering with academic librarians increases the efficacy of reaching these goals. It is apparent that mastering information literacy in nursing education and higher education at large is vital to the profession and requires systematic collaborative efforts. As Badka argued, the marriage of knowledge and practice through information literacy is foundational, not optional, to the nursing profession. For the most part, initiatives for information literacy integration into curriculum are in the early phases. Therefore, research possibilities relating to information literacy are bountiful. There remains a need to establish effective ways to incorporate information literacy into larger classrooms as well as online distance programming. Online professional development opportunities for instructor, instructors can be expanded upon and their effectiveness evaluated. Additionally, there is room to appraise the user friendliness and effectiveness of information literacy guidelines, such as the ILCSN and framework in order to recommend for or against their utilization. US strategies and initiatives can be compared to global efforts. And furthermore, there is research potential in determining the specifics of allocating resources, such as time and finances, to increasing instructor knowledge of methods for integrating information literacy into curr curriculum, as well as time allocated within the program to information literacy. Finally, there is a need to research how to increase information literacy in the clinical arena for those individuals not enrolled in higher education. After conducting this research and assessing the impact information literacy has on professional practice, I am admittedly ashamed that I did not fully acknowledge its relevance earlier. While I have had opportunities as a graduate student to become more familiar with strategies to appraise the sources of information I utilize and conduct systematic literature reviews, I can honestly say that until now, I'm not sure I appreciated the significance. As a member of the millennial generation, I realize now that I might fall into the category of individuals who have an overinflated, self-rated ability to seek out reliable information. Likewise, I would also agree that as the literature suggests, I also have a limited con confidence in my ability to appraise evidence, despite being my final year of a master's in nursing education. Yet when I compare myself to peers that are not in higher education, I believe I do have a greater intent to incorporate evidence-based information and tools into my personal practice. As a consequence of my assessment to the relevance of information literacy to nursing education and practice, I have a newfound appreciation for information literacy, literacy initiatives and efforts, and intend to increase my mastery of information literacy through exploring the tools and resources mentioned above. I would like to search for existing research regarding information literacy outside of higher education, specifically in the clinical environment, and what strategies exist, if any do, to advance information literacy for nurses and professional practice. In my current practice, I am often astounded at how few nurses use credible tools and evidence-based practice guidelines such as UpToDate to inform their practice. As a nurse of eight years in the emergency setting, I recognize how easy it is to succumb to old habits and resist change. My time as a graduate student, as well as this current assessment, has increased my awareness of the risk that is imposed upon patient care and society should nursing professionals fail to assimilate information literacy into practice and commit to lifelong learning. Moving forward, I see potential to propose research for a capstone regarding the impact of enhancing information literacy competencies in clinical nurses on patient outcomes. Thank you for viewing my presentation. And here are my references.